Let's graph dependent and independent variables. So here's a word problem. That'll make all this stuff on the screen actually make sense. Let's say that Timmy goes to a bank that's running out of business and he is told that for every dollar he gives them, they will give him $2 back. So in other words, whatever amount he gives them, they're going to give him twice that amount back. Now, whatever amount he borrows from the bank, they're going to expect him to pay them back twice that amount. So we have our X and Y over here on our chart. Our X represents the amount of money Timmy gives the bank. So if Timmy gives the bank $3, our X value over there, then he'll get out two times three, which is six. They'll give him $6 back. So the amount of money he got back, our Y value, was completely dependent on how much money he gave them, our X value. That's why, that's you know how you know where your dependent and where your independent variable is. So this $6 he got back was 100% dependent on him actually giving them $3. Now, they're going to give him twice back how much he gives them. Say he gives them $2. He'll get out $4. So this $4 was dependent on him giving them $2. Or our Y value was dependent on our X value, which the X value would be considered our independent variable. So let's say he gives them $1. Oops, let me do that differently. Let's say he gives them $1, he'll get $2 out. Let's say he gives them $0, 2 times 0 is 0. Let's say he borrows a dollar, so he's losing, or well, they're losing a dollar. If he borrows a dollar, they're going to expect $2 back, so he'll lose $2 in the end. If he borrows $2, he's going to lose $4 in the end. If he borrows three dollars, two times negative three is negative six, he loses six dollars. Now, let's graph this. We have our x-axis over here and our y-axis. Up and down, x-axis is going across. And these are our points. Three on the x-axis, six on the y. So three, six is our first point. Go across three points on our x, and then up six points on our y-axis. Now our next point is two, four. Go across two on our x, up four on our y-axis. Now we have one, two, cross one, up two. If we give them zero dollars, they're not going to give us anything back and we won't owe them anything. If we borrow a dollar, we pay them back two dollars, negative two. So negative one, negative two. Now we have negative 2 on the x-axis and negative 4 on the y. And negative 3 and negative 6. And then this line should be straight. Uh, maybe I can make it kind of straight doing this. Let's try this. It should go through all of our points. So not the most straight drawing, but I think you get the point. Now again, our Y value, or how much money we got out, was dependent on how much money we gave them initially, our X value. Our X value is independent of our Y value. Y dependent on X. The money we got out, Y dependent on our X value. And I know I just repeated that a bunch of times, but it's just important that you get the point. And uh, we're gonna do one more example. All right, I paused it and I cleared the board really quick uh, for this next one. So this time, let's say that Timmy is pretty reckless and he's going to rent a tiger for his birthday party. He has to pay $100 an hour for the tiger and they have to pay Timmy $100 for every hour he loses if they're late. So he's paying $100 per hour he has it and they will pay him $100 for every hour they're late to the party. 
with the tiger. So what we have here is 100 times x is equal to y. So this 100 is the $100 an hour. X is the amount of hours he has the tiger, or it could be the amount of hours they're late. So $100 times our X amount, or however many hours he has them, gives us the total amount he owes them or that they owe him. So let's just do this because doing is easier than talking about it. $100 times three hours. So we're saying he has this tiger for three hours and he'll have to pay them $300. So our Y value or $300 here was dependent on our X value, how many hours? So $300 was dependent on the fact that he had the tiger for three hours. Now how about for two hours, 100 times two, it's gonna cost him $200. If he has it for one hour, 100 times one, he has it, well, a bill for $100, he has it he doesn't get the tiger at all because he didn't order it, then it's 100 times zero, and anything times zero is just zero. Now, how about negative one? So this time they're late an hour. So now they're gonna lose $100, and they so they owe him $100. If they're late two hours, they owe him $200. If they're late three hours, they owe him $300, so they're losing $300. Now let's graph this again, and one more time, I know it's repetitive, but how much money Timmy has to pay, or his Y value, is dependent on his X value, which is how many hours he has the tiger, and the X value would be considered our independent variable. All right, let's graph this. So for this one, we're going to say three points over on X, and we'll say each point on our Y axis here represents $100. So we'll have three, 300, two, 200, one on the X axis, up 100, zero, zero, negative one, and they owe him $100, negative two, negative 200. So, so like this is negative 200, this is negative 100. Any, okay, so negative three, negative 300. And then we just draw our uh, hopefully pretty good line. Should go through all the dots, but it's pretty hard to draw a straight line. And I doubt your teacher will expect a straight line. This was our x-axis, this was our y-axis, and I hope you liked that video. I hope it made things a little easier for you or a little easier to understand. If it didn't, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try and make something better. Uh, any questions you have down below, thank you for watching.